For more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. As US troops began withdrawing from Afghanistan on May 1st, the Taliban has launched attacks all over the country. The Doha agreement between the US and Afghanistan under former President Donald Trump had set May 1st as the deadline for the troops to withdraw. Now with the US having crossed this deadline, the Taliban too is refusing to hold up its end of the deal. On May 3rd, Taliban forces launched an offensive in Afghanistan's Hilmand province just two days after the US handed over control of the Hilmand base to the Afghanistan army. The fighting that broke out has led to the displacement of a thousand families in the area. News of various such attacks on military bases, security outposts, etc. is coming from various parts of the country. These attacks are being seen as part of the Taliban's spring offensive, even though they have not been officially declared as such. With the US troops withdrawing, the Taliban seems to be escalating its offensive against the Afghan government in order to expand its control over the country, just as many had feared. After two decades of war, the US is withdrawing without any peace plan in place. It is leaving the country after being defeated. None of its objectives have been achieved. One of the main goals was the defeat of the Taliban. Now desperate to withdraw troops, the US has proposed a transitional government which also includes the Taliban. The current US administration under President Joe Biden is openly stating that it believes the Taliban will govern less harshly this time around in comparison to what it did between 1996 to 2001. In face of the rising violence, even President Ashraf Ghani is backing this proposal after having refused to share power with the Taliban before. However, will the Taliban drop its military offensive to participate in this joint transitional government? Back in 2001, just as the US began its invasion into Afghanistan, Afghan leader Abdul Haq stated in an interview that military action by itself in the present circumstances is only making things more difficult, especially if this war goes on a long time and many civilians are killed. The war has gone on for 20 years and over 70,000 civilians have been killed. Haq had said that the best thing would be for the US to work for a united political solution involving all the Afghan groups. Otherwise, there will be an encouragement of deep divisions between different groups, backed by different countries and badly affecting the whole region. 20 years later, the divide between Taliban and other groups in Afghanistan seems to have become too big to bridge through dialogue. Some experts believe that Taliban considers itself to be winning at the moment and sees no reason to become part of any power-sharing agreements. The US, meanwhile, has stated that it is leaving the country, but it has not publicly talked about any plans for the exit of the undisclosed 1,000 troops, the special forces, private contractors, etc. Afghanistan remains an area of strategic interest for the US because of its proximity to China, Russia and Iran. The US is partnering with Turkey in its efforts to shape the outcome in Afghanistan in accordance with its needs. This is despite Turkey's controversial involvement with ISIS and Al-Qaeda in Syria. It has been reported that ISIS has been shifting its fighters from Syria to northern Afghanistan. This movement of extremist fighters is of concern not only to Afghanistan, but also to Central Asia and to China. As the US is publicly leaving Afghanistan, it is not talking about the rights of Afghan women and girls, who will again be left to the mercy of the rising fundamentalist forces. No long-term changes were established to safeguard their rights by the US in these two decades of war. The US is leaving, at least publicly, with the Taliban back in power. Afghanistan is back to where it was in 2001.